What's going on, Sean? First of all, bro, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, I feel like I had to get you to stop beating people up to do this episode. So thank you so much for doing so, bro. <laughs> you got it, man. Always a pleasure. Definitely appreciate it, bro. Um, just want to let you know, man, with this podcast, I did just started a few weeks ago, and I was just really wanting to bring value to the table um, by people that I'm fans of, people that I've had an opportunity to work with, and people who are just fans of each other. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you are definitely one of the leading people um, in the industry um, on a local level and also much more than that. Um, and I say from a local level because that's where I'm sitting from. You see what I'm saying? So I just want to say, bro, like I support you 100 percent, definitely cheering you on, bro. And I'm super proud of you, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's it really feels good to uh, see and hear and uh, just, you know, watching each other support each other. I don't think it happens enough. So when you do see it and you and you recognize it, man, it's it's uh, appreciated. So thank you. Absolutely. And another thing before we dive into the questions that I want to highlight about you, bro, is that you are um, the type of person to feed other people. And what I mean by that is when you get an opportunity that may be, may be for you, you are one of those people that share an opportunity. I also want to say if the opportunity may not be for you, you still share that opportunity. So I just want to say that, yeah, I do feel like it does need to be done a lot more. <clears throat> I try to do my best at the same time if there is like something that we can share it doesn't always work out that way you know what i'm saying so it's just another thing that i definitely wanted to highlight about you bro yeah thanks man uh i found in this business uh there is a lot of competition there's a lot of cutthroat people will uh try to hide the rest of the world so they can uh, capitalize on uh, on the on the position but i'm not like that and, and there's a reason man i get it people are struggling to pay the bills to find a job to, in the acting world to pay them but for me luckily i, I guess i I'm, I'm financially stable um on other in other ways so that way when it comes to this i don't have to i guess be greedy that way so and i think it's a disservice to the client the production uh the filmmaker whatever you want to call them mm -hmm. because they might find somebody who's better than me, maybe not in talent wise, but, but as far as what they're really looking for in that character, because mm -hmm. we all have our personal quirks about us. Our, our, that's what makes us special. We're all unique in our own way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your or somebody else's uniqueness might be exactly what they're looking for, for that character in that film. And if I try to cutthroat them or shut them out, the production will never see this person, won't ever know they exist, and mm -hmm. it does them a disservice. So. Absolutely. I feel like one thing I wanted to highlight that you mentioned is when we do an audition, when we go up for something, we never know what they book us for. You know what I'm saying? We can only plan and prep so much. You know what I'm saying? And also another thing I wanted to kind of rewind is you mentioned the competition. Um, there is a thing that goes around to where, yes, it does take a tribe. It does take a team. And then at the same time, it's like, how do we build that team? How do we build that tribe? You know, when there is competition, um, I'm still, then this is something that I'm wanting to work at and get better at as well. Yeah, absolutely. And oh man, I can tell you being, starting as an actor, learning the whole filmmaking process to six years later where I am now, producing my own stuff, I can definitely tell you, it definitely takes a village to uh, make a movie. It is crazy hard to do. And there's just so many moving pieces. So all the support, all the help you can get from everybody who is passionate about filmmaking, who wants to help uh, do it. Absolutely. You can't do it alone. And that's why you see in movies, when they roll the credits, they, they go for 15 minutes, fill the page up with names. That's how many people it takes to make these movies, man. Yeah, seriously, bro. Um, you mentioned you've been doing this for six years. When did you start to get into acting? So it actually happened in 2018. I uh, I was at it because I, I was a Tucson police officer. I'm now retired. But okay. I went to a fellow PPD guy's house for 4th of July in 2018. He had a friend there named Danny Ray. Danny Ray 
uh, does Western wardrobe, uh, and he ends up on a lot of pro projects, movie, music videos, movies, films, whatever. And he said, hey, man, we're uh, – and I was interested. You know, I was questioning him and talking about it. I was intrigued. And he was like, why don't you come out, man? We're doing an independent horror film. Uh, why don't you come audition? And I was like, nah. <laughs> and he was like, no, man, it'll be fun. Come on out. So I was like, eh, what the heck? All right. So I went out. I auditioned. I didn't get the part I was uh, auditioning for, which was the sheriff of all things, because I was a cop. I was like, oh, I'll audition for the sheriff. But they didn't give me the sheriff role. Instead, they offered me a lead role in this movie. And I was like, uh, they're like, will you do it? I was like, uh, sure, why not? I got the script and I was like, um, I got to memorize all this. You know, I knew nothing about being an actor at this point. And uh, they're like, yeah, you got to you gotta memorize all that. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. But um, the first day on set, I absolutely fell in love with the process. And that was it. History so, so your first time, your first time getting into acting was you getting accidentally booked for a lead part. Yes. That's awesome, bro. That's very cool. So would, that would be around, obviously, your first performance. What, what was that like? You had mentioned that you needed to memorize the script. Now, before the training and the techniques come into play, before we get into the acting classes and stuff like that, what were some of the things um, within your first year that you kind of ran to, if you had anything in your toolbox at that time? So I got to tell you, coming, coming into the acting world uh, later in my life, after basically living a whole life as military and, and civilian law enforcement was actually a benefit to me because mm -hmm. during, during that time, I just got to interact with so many people on so many different levels, got to see so many different behaviors, people at the lowest lows, you know, tweakers, mm -hmm. uh, criminals, uh, people just having a hard time, mental health illnesses, you name it. I got to deal and see it firsthand, real life, how people reacted and acted in, in these states of minds. And I'm able to bring that into my, my acting, which is, I think, super helpful because I can read a script. I can see a character. Uh, I can read their backstory. And I can kind of go in my own memory and remember something similar through my, my life dealing with somebody similar in that situation and, and kind of bring it out in the actual uh, scene or in the in the movie mm -hmm. so no, I that's think that, really... say that one more time i think that benefited me absolutely i also wanted to say man um i know i mentioned this on a post when you when you've posted um but definitely appreciate the service you mentioned you come from the military you also serve as a police officer so i definitely want to say thank you so much for the service I have a high, high respect for people who have served, who put their life on the line uh, to serve this country. I also have people in my family who have served as well um, in the Air Force specifically. Uh, so I just want to say thank you so much, bro. Yeah, my pr my pr my pleasure, man. It's uh, it's been a hell of a ride. I enjoyed it. I, uh, no, I, I enjoy I can imagine, bro. helping people. So. Yeah, no, I can imagine, bro. Um, the things that you had to go through, I know you mentioned a few things like mental health with other people. Um, how... I want to, I want to know, like, kind of rephrase this question, but I guess let me just ask you: How hard is it getting into show business, balancing that with mental health? Um, because we know that this is an industry that does deal with a lot of rejection. Um, so, what are some of the ways to kind of keep your men mental health in check? Yeah, this business can. This industry is ruthless, man. They, they really don't care, man. <laughs> they don't care about people. Um, and it's a lot of rejection. Uh, and you, you just you got to have thick skin in this business, and you gotta you gotta stop playing mind games with yourself. Stop critiquing yourself so much. Where, you, like, you're sending an audition, or you get you don't get the part, whatever. Don't beat yourself up over it. <clears throat> I, I've I played these mind games with myself, and. It's not healthy. You got to you got to know if you put in the work and you present a great audition, whatever, um, a callback, performance. No matter what happens after that, you got to know that 
you did the work and you did a good job. If you don't get the part, it's out of your control and you can't beat yourself up over it. So once, once you send that audition in, it's best just to forget about it, move on with life. And if you happen to get a phone call or an email later on saying, hey, by the way, we loved your audition, that's just cherry on the top. No, absolutely. Definitely like that one, bro. In your opinion, purpose or potential? I don't know, man. Um, it all depends on the person. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be more me, fulfilling to me, you? Absolutely, yep. Yeah, for me, going into this industry gave me actually a, a sense of purpose because I was leaving one career field, law enforcement, mm -hmm. to pursue another. And it kind of mm -hmm. bridged the gap of leaving law enforcement, even though I'm still doing it on the military and the Air Force Reserves. But it gave me a sense of purpose and a drive and a challenge. Mm -hmm. And for me, if you're, if you're a human, purpose gives you the drive, I guess, the motivation, the enthusiasm to – to work hard, to push through, to to overcome all these challenges, uh, to to want to succeed. Mm -hmm. And this industry is so tough, man. I can tell you, military law enforcement was a breeze compared to this. This mm -hmm. industry is so hard to get your foot in the door, to make a name for yourself, and to be welcomed, I guess, into the uh, – to the big boy table, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll call it. And for me, that just that just gives me that energy. Even when I'm I'm tired, because I sacrifice sleep, I sacrifice time with family, I sacrifice so much time trying to succeed in this business. It's exhausting, but mm -hmm. the pursuit of wanting to be successful is what feeds me and prevents me from just giving up mm -hmm. this this industry is very demanding bro we definitely can't stress that that enough and we have to find ways to definitely refuel refresh ourselves keep our cup full you know in order to pour on to other people we have to make sure that we have something you know within us keeping our, our glass full what are some of the ways that you keep your glass full you keep yourself fresh you keep yourself sharp yeah, I, I, I try to live a healthy lifestyle. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Um, I work out. Spend time with my family. Embrace that love. Laugh. Laugh a lot. And stay away from negative energy. Negative people. God, my whole life, I've avoided negative people. I don't want to be around negative energy. Mm -hmm. Because... You can take any situation and find the negative in it, and mm -hmm. you can also take every situation and find positive in it. So I'm Absolutely. the type of guy who will take any situation and try to find the positive, and I try to shut out all the negative noise, and I think that helps keep me sane. Absolutely. Uh, let me circle back to finding the right tribe and also tying into what you just said um, with the negative energy. Um, because you are who you surround yourself with, and within this end, within this industry, it's no different. Um, how are you able to kind of pick and choose who's for you, and really feel that if this person is for you, and not just coming around you for, you know, I get to work with Sean Baruby, for example. You know what I mean? Absolutely, mm -hmm. I've seen it. Um, you got your people who. The good thing about, I guess, being a police officer so many, so many years, I've, I've gotten good at reading people and, and, and knowing when uh, bullshit is being thrown my way. Mm -hmm. So that helps uh, understanding where people are coming from. Plus, the people who really support will show it. People like you, people like uh, Maria Falcon, uh, Mendez. These, these are people that are always 
rooting for me. And they, they show it, they say it, they post about it, they share my stuff, um, they comment on my, uh, my wins, my successes. These are the people you know that they got your back and they're rooting for you to succeed. And then you got other people who are just trying to get their, I guess, foot in the door on your mm-hmm. success and, 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 and ride your, your, your coattails on your success. So you, you just got to watch out for them, know that they exist. Um, don't, don't exert too much energy worrying about them or concentrating mm-hmm. on them. Just know that mm-hmm. they exist. Look for the signs, the red, the red flags, and just cordially acknowledge maybe they exist, but don't waste too much energy on them and know what they're doing and focus mm-hmm. on the people who, who, who want to grow together and succeed together. Mm-hmm. I feel put like it's going to take. That's, that's the big one is the put in the work. That's, and, yeah. and that's. I just had this conversation with another person. A lot of people want other people to do all the work mm-hmm. and then bring them in and mm-hmm. give them like a golden opportunity into your hard work and, and, and take all the glory for it. Um, so you got to watch out for that. And yeah, I feel like the real people awesome. will. Yeah, real people will recognize real people. I feel like that's just within within any any industry. Um, so. It is. It is tough. It requires a lot of patience. You know, you do kind of have to be resilient because this is kind of a lonely industry until you're able to find your people, you know, so you are kind of dealing with rejection and kind of loneliness. And that was tough for me to deal with, Sean, if I can just be transparent with you, because I'm like, man, like I got such a big heart. Like, OK, we play all these cool, aggressive characters on screen, but it's like, yo, I'm the complete opposite. And it's like I want to put everybody on if possible. So it is very difficult for me to, to kind of understand that. But as I progress, I'm understanding a, a little bit more because unfortunately I wasn't a police officer. I don't know, like I didn't know how to read people at the time. So, but you definitely learn and grow as you kind of apply yourself a little bit more, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's hard at first because you just, mm-hmm. you just want to get on any project you possibly can just to get the experience to, to just be part of a project. But then... You do learn. Unfortunately, there are some filmmakers out there who who take advantage of people's desperate uh, uh, desperation, I guess, to, to, to be on a project, um, their kindness. Um, so you just got to be careful of those guys. They're out there. And mm-hmm. just choose wisely on the filmmakers you want to work with. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with doing a volunteer, mm-hmm. but just know going into it that you're, that you're okay doing it as a volunteer, that you're okay helping this filmmaker, but maybe just do a little research, to make sure that they're the real deal, make sure that they actually know how to make a movie, that they're mm-hmm. going to finish the movie, that you're going to be able to see this movie, that you're going to be able That's to big get, get, get some uh, footage out mm-hmm. of this movie, you know. So absolutely help filmmakers as much as you can. But it's a team effort. Everybody mm-hmm. should be getting something out of it. Of course, everybody would like to get paid. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I want to book you for this project, you know. In the beginning, like you, you would want to see, like if you know, is what is this role paying or whatever it may be. And once you can get confident enough to kind of, you know, if that's not to happen, there is a help me help you type of situation. My next question was going to be, what are some of the red flags? And you nailed it. You know, like what's some of the things to look out for? And you're like, well, do your research. Make sure this person or this team knows how to, you know, shoot a film. Make sure that they're going to complete the film that they have an actual plan. Um, a lot of people will want to come to you and they won't even have a script ready. And it's like, I, I feel bad because I want to help out. And this is a skill set that I need to learn, but I don't know how to write a script. You know, I'm, I'm working on something right now, but I'm taking my time because I'm playing around with it. I'm trying to test it out a little bit. You know what I mean? But thank you for also throwing in some of those those red flags. And um, never, mm-hmm. never pay to be on someone's project no matter how they try to mask it. If you got somebody 
same, you know, whatever. We'll give you an executive producer credit to pay to act in my movie or come take an acting class with me. Pay me to be in my acting class so I can put you in my movie. All the different ways they try to hide it where they want to, they basically want you to pay them to mm-hmm. act in their movie. Those are the guys you want to run away from. I agree, I understand bro. filmmakers, independent filmmakers don't have a budget mm-hmm. and they might not be able to pay you, but they need to be transparent up front and be like, look, this is personally financed. This is my first movie. I don't have a lot of money. I, I can't afford to pay you. But and may, as long as they're clear up front, but if they're asking you for money to mm-hmm. act in their project, run away. Those are the people you definitely want to run away from. I've never had to deal with that, bro, but that that would be a funny situation to encounter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, They they try to hide it in all different little ways. But Mm -hmm. if you have to open your wallet to act in their movie, run away. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you're saying that because, yeah, I don't know if that's something that you've experienced or that, you know, a friend has told you about that. But again, definitely thank you for shedding light on that. Yeah, it has happened. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen it with through my own experience and, and others. And mm-hmm. I wanted to touch on your, this is a lonely journey mm-hmm. as an artist. Well, we're, obviously we're talking about acting, but mm-hmm. in many different artist fields, such as musicians, comedians, actors, mm-hmm. it's a very lonely journey. And what I mean by that is until you really start succeeding, you you're, you're alone pursuing this, mm-hmm. hustling, grinding, uh, driving throughout the night to go from your full-time job to another city to film the next day or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm alone a lot, just driving, mm-hmm. just traveling. And it's because I want to do this and I want to succeed and I want to pursue it. But just know, like you said, if, It's very lonely until you get to the top, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I also do feel, um, not to get too spiritual, but I'm a man of faith. You know, we've talked about it briefly on set when when we've had a break some time. And I've always wanted to dive into this. And I don't know if now would be the right time. But it's the same thing, man. You build it and they'll come piece by piece, brick by brick. I feel like had I would have quit, I never would have had an opportunity to you know, add you on social media. And then had I would have quit, I never would have had an opportunity to actually share the screen with you. You know what I'm saying? So it is very lonely, but you do have to apply some faith in there somewhere because we can't do it on our own. You know what I'm saying? This, this industry is very demanding. Yeah. And I'm, that's another thing to keep me healthy is, um, mm-hmm. and keep me sane through the struggle is, uh, having Absolutely. the support of my mm-hmm. wife. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. If it wasn't for her, man, I probably wouldn't be uh, where I am now. She is so supportive of my, my, my acting journey. And she understands I'm gone a lot and that it takes sacrifice of me being with the family and our four year old twins and if you can imagine trying to juggle that family life if she wasn't supportive and was constantly causing you know arguments or tense situations between the two of us because i'm pursuing this but yet she wants this and you really gotta have whoever you have in your life you know whether it's a girlfriend boyfriend a spouse whatever mm-hmm. You need to talk about what you want to achieve, how you're going to achieve it, and the sacrifices that you both have to make to pursue that. So, Do you think it would be right to set boundaries? Because some people are in this to be professional, of course. And as we know, some people are in this to just play around. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that's funny you say that. It's it's, each relationship's different. But for me and my wife, we're pretty much an open book. So meaning I hide nothing. 
She has mm -hmm. access to all my social media, all my messages, all my Facebook messages, all my Instagram messages, all my text messages. I hide nothing. Um, I, I keep her abreast of everything. And it's important to do that because you're right. When your partner is gone for long periods of time, your mm -hmm. mind can start running crazy and you start thinking crazy things. So it's important to continuously keep your relationship healthy, communicate, tell them what's going on. Um, so everybody can feel comfortable with what's going on. You know what, what you just said, I want to piggyback off of that, bro. They also say, and this is to go off of the open book statement that you said, and I actually, like, I love that, bro, that you guys are very transparent and honest with each other. I feel like that is absolutely a foundation in a relationship. Um, but the, not a quote that I wanted to say, but I just wanted to throw this in there, but Superman can't be Superman when he's thinking about Lois. You know what I'm that's, saying? So you wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to perform and go out there. And of course, you have so much more to offer than than just being an actor, bro. But you wouldn't be able to continuously do the things you do if you guys didn't have that trust, if you guys didn't have that foundation. So again, bro, thank you so much on on just shedding light on the importance of having a good, healthy relationship. And it is different from relationship to relationship, of course. But as long as each relationship can come to an understanding, which would revolve around truth, then I think that would be a great place to start. 100%, buddy. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Uh, what is one character that you haven't played yet that you would like to get a chance to play? Hmm. I would like to do a movie where I play a character who is basically, it's an under, underdog story. Okay. Would that be like in the fighting realm in, in combat sports or? Uh, it could be, uh, it would most likely want to be some kind of uh, athletic type story. Okay. What's your favorite okay. genre to act in? Oh, <laughs> action. Yeah. I feel like that was kind of a dead giveaway. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I'm an action guy uh, through and through. I love doing horror too. Mm -hmm. I love playing creatures and monsters, as you know. Um, Getting buried yeah. alive. <laughs> yeah. What it feels like. Seriously. Oh God, that one. yeah. Woo. Doing a life cast is uh, is a rough ordeal where you got to sit there and there's a jelly that hardens and you can't move for like hours. That's true, bro. <laughs> right? I just did the headpiece, literally, bro, which was like two and a half hours. You did that, and they called you back to do shoulders all the way down, bro. Um, but what was that process like, bro? Like, how long did that take? So, in my situation. Mm -hmm. I had to do it for this this movie we're doing right now, Case of Acacia Thatcher. I had to do mm -hmm. a live cast three times for the same project because the first one, we kind of the, the special effects person kind of used the wrong stuff and it didn't work. And then the second time, um, I sat through it. Something happened after the fact, so I sat through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Got the life cast done, and then as my mold or whatever you want to call it was being created, something mm -hmm. went wrong and it, it got destroyed. So then I had to go to another special effects person, sit through the process again um, <laughs> to get the same life cast made. So the first two times was about two hours of just laying on your back without being able to move. And you just sit there and you, you get in your zen and you breathe. And then the third time, it was probably about a three-hour ordeal. I'm laying on a wooden table, naked. Um, it was cold. <laughs> uh, and the reason it took three hours is because the special effects person was teaching some other people. So by teaching them, it takes longer. So the process took about three hours and it was, it was rough. Can it we shed some more light on the, the, the pain and struggle we go to, to entertain these people? Like, yeah. I couldn't imagine bro doing a full body live cast. Like I would be down to do it, but I feel like the process would be, man, you know, it's hard because you got to sit there completely still mm -hmm. with this goop and it gets heavy. They put layer of layer of layer mm -hmm. on you. And then it hardens. So just imagine you can't move your fingers, 
You can't move your arms. You can't move anything. You're just sitting mm -hmm. there. And you got to check your posture too, man. You got to, you can't just sit there and like lay down and take a nap. I feel like you do have to lay a certain way because once the mold starts to tighten up, you have to kind of be locked in that position until they, until it fully hardens up and then they peel it off you. Correct. And let me tell you, they use a special, uh, a special goop that's mm. not supposed to stick to your hair, mm. but it, it does. It still sticks to your <laughs> So That's they, what they tell you. <laughs> when they go to pull it off, mm. holy crap. It, it doesn't rip the hairs out of your arm like 40-year-old virgin where whoosh, they wax yeah. the, the, the hair off his chest and he's bleeding. Mm. But it sticks enough that it's, you still feel it pulling yeah. and it hurts. So they're like, <laughs> <laughs> and you got to just do it quick, rip the Band-Aid off and just whoosh. And, yeah. and oh my god i'm just screaming like ah! <laughs> i bet bro i would be too and they got to do that for the whole body right whole body yeah dang dude yeah. <laughs> that sounds painful uh what is one genre that you uh, haven't gotten a chance to to play in but you'd love to play I've had the luxury of probably being in every genre, man. I've done sci-fi, okay. I've done action, I've done drama, I've done psychological thrillers, horror, rom-com. I guess. Have you just done a full romance or a full? Okay. I haven't. I guess done a straight-up comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, have you done a full-on romance film? I know you mentioned rom-com. Yeah. Um, I got to do uh, some rom-com stuff with um, the, the Micah films on Facebook that a lot of Arizonans were doing, David Rice and Neha and okay. all them, and mm -hmm. Stephanie. And, uh, so I got to do a, a few of those. Uh, Baga films, you might have heard of them. Baga films, yep. Yeah, Baga films. Yeah. So I did a couple rom-coms with them. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're actually a, like a cool group of people to work with, man. Baga Films, I think, uh, got to remember their names, Ellie. Um, yep. Yeah, they're, they're super fun to work with, man. Um, but I wanted to also ask you, bro, if you had a piece of advice, man, for somebody starting out in acting, um, their first time, they, they see your work, you know, they're inspired by your work, what would that advice be? So I highly, highly, highly advise every actor, new or old, Mm -hmm. um, depending on where you are and what experience you have, for me, the best thing that happened at the beginning of my acting career was Wendy Elaine Wright and the Hollywood Winner's Circle. Whether you, whatever, heard bad stuff, good stuff, I can only imagine most stuff you heard was good about her, uh, but there's always haters. But... Wendy Elaine Wright created this program called the Hollywood Winner's Circle. And it's, it, it is a program that teaches you from step one to step 10, everything, the business side of acting. And if you complete this course and do everything she says, you will be leagues ahead of any other actor out there that's starting off trying to figure the game out. Because there's no, there's no template. There's no blueprint of how you reach right. success in this industry. Right. Every person has to learn it their own way. Every person gains their success in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it happens at all different points in people's careers. Mm -hmm. So 1,000%, 1, I can't say it enough. Start with Hollywood Winner's Circle. You can go to Facebook, join her free mm -hmm. Facebook page called Talent Managers for Actors, TMFA. Go to that site, join it. It's totally free. Over 100,000 actors, managers, agents, coaches, casting directors, you name it, a part of this group. And they have moderators. People can ask questions. They answer it for free. You're getting this information 
from experts in the industry in all different areas. They will critique your headshots, your demos, your your monologues, your clips, everything. Everything is on there. If you want to search and find it, any question you can probably think of in the acting industry, you can go on Talent Manager for Actors and get it totally free. Mm-hmm. Or if you want it all condensed in a nice gift wrap package for yourself, go to the Hollywood Winter Circle, pay the one-time fee that whatever it is, and you're a member for life. And you get the whole program. You get all this free advice. It, it is amazing what this lady does for, for acting. Man, she just loves helping actors and watching us win and succeed. I love showing love to other people, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I definitely want to collect her information, man. I want to put the links and everything down below. I know you mentioned a Facebook group. You know, I can grab the link to that. I'll post it down below on the YouTube channel in the description. Um, But that's also the thing, man. Like, you know, giving people their roses while they're still alive. And and why not? Because that's not going to hurt from from stopping you from gaining your success. You also mentioned something about haters. Not to be cliche, Sean, but how do you deal with haters, bro? Ignore them. Don't, don't pay don't, them any mind. Don't exert energy on, on them. Just know that they exist. Know that they're potentially uh, rooting against you, hoping you fail, making negative comments about you, whatever. Just know they exist. Don't exert any energy on them. Don't think about them. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy on them. And... Like I said, I've always focused and put myself with groups of people who are positive, positive energy, and that's the way to go. As they, as they say in math, you know, a positive plus a positive is a positive. A positive plus a negative is a negative. So stay away from the negatives. That's very. I love how simply you put that, bro. And a lot of people. Sometimes I kind of look past that too, you know, some days are better than others, you know, but thank you again for shedding light on that. Um, Who in the industry, bro, have you not had a chance to work with that you'd like to have an opportunity to work with? Woo, so many. Oh, gosh. Go ahead, give me your your top five, if we can get a top five. All right. Well, growing up, I grew up, my favorite movies are Aliens, Aliens 2, Terminator 2, Rambo, Predator. So that being said, I would obviously love to work with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I would love to work with Sylvester Stallone. I would love to work with James Cameron. So those are some of the top. Christopher Nolan. Love his stuff. So, Quentin Tarantino is another one. That'd be, bro, that'd be sick. <laughs> that'd be crazy. And that's and then, the thing. I, I see you I see you working with these people. I see you in these realms, bro. Like, this is the thing. Like, within the industry, man, with enough faith, enough hard work, determination, and discipline, and we can add a whole bunch of other words, um, there's an opportunity. There's a chance for us to get there. You yeah, absolutely. I mean, already – in my journey, I have worked with so many people I never thought I would ever meet in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is, it's the coolest thing. Like, to meet Zack Snyder and just have a that's conversation. That's pretty cool, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's badass. Bob Odenkirk, Will Smith, John Bernthal, Wesley Snipes, Kevin Hart, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> this is like, what? I, am I really, bro. Am I really yeah, that's working cool. with you right now? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I don't get, like, starstruck by anybody, you know, but it's just cool to be working with these these famous people. And it's like, you and I are, are working together, doing the same thing. We're both yeah. acting. So it's, the it's fact cool. that you got to meet the Punisher, bro. You said Jonathan Bernthal. Like, I felt like when he got cast for the Punisher, I was like, that was a really, really good, good cast. Yes. Yeah, I mean, some roles are just... Some people are born for certain roles, and that's what I'm talking about earlier at the beginning Mm -hmm. of our conversation is if you if you try to cut throat some other person out of a project because you're trying to hoard it for yourself, 
Right. You might be doing that production a disservice, and that person could have been born for that role. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's huge, bro. You just said that very like quickly, not quickly, but that's very huge. Like you don't want to take opportunities from any anybody because it's not so much, oh, this person's gonna pop, but you just said it yourself, bro, that I wanted to highlight, but you're doing a disservice to the production. Yeah. And and to give you an example, when you cast the perfect person for a role, the movie should never be made remade. And if they try to remake it, it's going to be a failure. And an example, Brandon mm -hmm. Lee was the perfect person for the movie The Crow. Talk about it, bro. Yep. And they're trying to do a remake on it. No. Brandon Lee was The Crow. Don't try to remake it with somebody else. You're, yeah. You're Especially gonna you're going to put you're going to put a clown in his shoes. And I, right. and I and I kind of mean that with the pun obviously. I forgot the actor's name, but it was the actor who played it, the clown. Yes. You know, but I, I do agree like that. That would be honestly, they're just trying to get hype off of it, you know, and, and it is unfortunate because I agree. Brandon Lee was the best crow and they shouldn't have touched that film. And when you perfectly cast something, mm -hmm. it never has to be touched again. It's 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 set in stone for eternity. You don't have to retouch it. It's mm -hmm. already perfect. Absolutely. What are a few projects that you're currently working on or um a few projects that you currently wrapped. I've seen on your Instagram, um, you're headed to California here pretty soon to go do a premiere for a project. Yeah, so thanks for asking that. So 2024 has been amazing for me, man. Uh, all my hard awesome, work bro. seems to be uh, come to fruition this year. I guest starred or co-starred on America's Most Wanted, uh, multiple episode recurring uh, role on General Hospital, uh, I just co-starred on another uh, show on CBS that I can't say yet because of NDA. Um, Shout out to NDAs, man. Keeping away all the good stuff. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. I don't want to say nothing too much. Oh, believe me. You'll, you'll know about it as soon as I can say it. Cool. Uh, I just uh, had a, a, a little role in a new movie with Tyrese Gibson, L.A. Grit. Oh, that's, uh, that's hopefully going to be uh, released this year. Uh, let's see. I just finished a sci-fi film where I get to play a villain called Sky Crash. Let's see. That was a film in L.A. Doing another movie called Kate Hugo in Tucson and Aravaca. So uh, bringing it back to Arizona. And I started a, a film company, a production company with some of my friends in Arizona, Carlos Berber, Jasmine Berber, uh, husband-wife combo. Shout uh, out they're to good Carlos friends. and Jasmine. Absolutely. Yeah, my good friend Daniel Miller and Luca uh, Patruno, and we we said, you know what? Screw it. The only thing stopping us from from making movies is ourselves. So we have all the equipment, we got the creativity, we got the the talent, and we said, screw it, let's do it. So we started a, a production company called Ten K Films, and we are working on our first feature film right now which is called Case of Acacia Thatcher, which you are part of. Yep. And we are about three quarters of the way done with that. And after we finish that, we're going to move right into production on our next one, which is Daniel Miller's big movie called Past Two. That's going to be an action flick, so I'm very excited yeah. for that one. And then um, right now we're premiering a movie we finished uh, last <laughs> year, and we're premiering it in Santa Ana, California on Sunday, this Sunday coming. And at the Frida Cinema. It's a horror film, and that's Luca's uh, directorial debut. And, oh, very cool. And Shout out to Luca. Yeah, we're very excited very for that cool. one. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show that movie. We're gonna show four previews of things that we're working on, which is Whom Shall I Fare, which I did with uh, my my buddies down in Tucson, Ant Marketing, Andrew Rosenfeld, and Jason Wright, and. Uh, Carlos Berber and the, the team. We brought mm -hmm. that one. Uh, that's going to be a new TV series that we're trying to pitch. We got the pilot episode done. Mm -hmm. We're showing the trailer for Case of Acacia Thatcher, which you're going to love. Uh, we're showing. Like, I haven't seen trailer. anything yet. Yeah. I know. You're going to love it, dude. We're showing a teaser trailer for uh, Past Due. 
and then a teaser trailer for the next movie that Carlos wants to do when we uh, get a bigger, bigger budget, and it's called Alibi. Where can we watch these uh, these projects? Um, are they going to be on any streaming platforms or? So distribution is mm -hmm. a whole nother ball game. So right now, we're not sure who's going to buy it and what streaming service is going to go on. So that's going to be something once we get it finished, we'll then uh, talk to different distribution companies and different companies to see if they want to buy it. Mm -hmm. And it'll go from there. Obviously, Absolutely. we want to we want to make some money off of uh, Case of Acacia Thatcher so we can put it towards our next films. And we want to get to the point where, you know, we can have a million dollar budget for a movie. So. And again, all we need to do is apply a little little bit of faith, bro, one brick at a time, and we'll definitely be on our way. Um, the tribe is coming if it's not already there. I do feel that within my heart, bro. Um, I do want to say, bro, thank you so much um, for taking the time today, bro. Um, I also wanted to ask you really quick, uh, where do you see yourself with, within the next year or two? What you got working uh, within the pipeline? So within the next year, I mm -hmm. uh, want to be knowing that we actually have a buyer for our films and, and we're succeeding in, in the fact that now we have bigger budgets and we can you know, pay more people and pay uh, people appropriate rates, what we feel people should be paid for their hard work. And that'll be a great failing is that we can help filmmakers, crew and cast, uh, you know, put bread on their table and do something they love to do, which is create. So I, I see myself being in that position with uh, 10K Films, and I'm looking forward to that. In addition to uh, my team, my manager and my agent are kicking ass and fighting uh, to get me a seat at the big boy table, and Come uh, on, let's, so go. let's go. My goal is to uh, yes, be a a very uh, common name for people. So when it comes to uh, uh, projects and stuff, you know, you say the name Sean Baruby, and they're like, oh yeah, that was the guy, and uh, whatever, and uh, th that they want you to own it. So that's that's my goal, and uh, that's where I, I, I see. I'm trying to manifest it and and see it happening manifestation with faith bro i'll definitely throw up a prayer for you you know that that absolutely comes your way um but that is all the questions that i have bro sean dude i appreciate you thank you so much again for taking the time is there anything else that you wanted to add uh before we end this episode no just uh thank you for the uh opportunity thanks for having the courage to to do this and talk to other artists and to give us a platform to talk about all the different aspects of, of filmmaking and, 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 and acting and the journey and, the, and being an artist and the struggles that we go through, it really helps because then other people can relate to that and know that they're not alone mm -hmm. in their struggles. They're not strange for, for you know being depressed every once in a while because something doesn't go right or I think it helps people heal when they know other people are, are going through the same thing and, and, and can hear other people talk about it. So thanks for, thanks for putting this together and having the courage to, uh, to make it happen. I definitely will. Thank you so much for saying that, bro, taking the time to say that. Uh, it was a thing for me, a little bit of a courage thing because I've never done a podcast before. I've never interviewed nobody before. And all I really wanted to do was to, for example, let me bring Sean on for the people who don't have access to him because I've had an opportunity, a blessing to actually get to know him. I have him in my book of business. Let me bring him on and just have him speak his truth through his experience to what he's gone through. You know what I'm saying? So appreciate you so much, bro.